ESPN Saturday primetime college football. Welcome to Scott Stadium, Charlottesville, Virginia, the lone address in the ACC where Florida State has ever lost a conference game. Tonight, two years removed from that streak-ending setback, the Seminoles return for the first time to the very spot where they fell just inches short of total and unquestioned ACC dominance. Is two years too long to forget so easily? Sort of a sickening feeling. It was a wild celebration. Here's the ball game. They actually thought we were going to lose. Touchdown! We won the game. No! It was devastating. No! At any sort of later, they going to lose. They say he didn't make it. The only thing I really remember is their, their fans storming the field. Virginia's upset Florida State. Many of the faces have changed, and quite a few were here that night. Here to draw on the experience of that emotionally charged evening. Florida State comes in loaded as always on offense and tougher on defense. So hold the wine and cheese for now, Virginia. It's the third-ranked Seminoles and the Cavaliers coming up. But first, let's check in with Mike Tirico back in the studio. Okay, Ron, as we get ready for our primetime game, if you're watching the golf, we'll get you the final leaderboard after four rounds in a little bit within our college football game. We're also going to keep an eye on number one, Nebraska, which is in action tonight. There are now seven unbeatens in major college football. Could be six in a little bit. Washington State has struggled this afternoon, taking on Arizona. Down seven, Wazoo able to tie the game. Michael Black's 17-yard run got it close enough to knock it in. All tied at 28. Three and a half left. We'll keep a close eye on this one. Oklahoma State knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten in double overtime when they choose to go for two and don't make it. Missouri gets the victory. Earlier today on ESPN, Michigan to 7-0. and The dominating defense continues. And Toledo stays unbeaten, scoring the last 21 to beat Bowling Green by 15 in the match. Primetime college football with Thad Busby. At America's most prestigious beer competition, you can't see anything. Can't see the labels. All you've got to go on is taste. So who wins the gold medal for best tasting American premium lager? Original Coors. Close your eyes and taste the one that won for taste. Original Coors. Jack, Larry and I got an extra ticket to the game. Oh, Kathy's out. I got the kid. He's got the kid. That's what he said last time. Tell him to get his mother to sit. Have your mother sit. We'll be there, too. What? what? Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way. We'll be fine, Jack. Go on. Go on. And we've got the warranties to prove it. So go. So where's your stuff? What's the... You didn't tell him. Tell me what... Is it a wagon? <laughs> a wagon. Yeah, relax. It's only Toronto. <laughs> Kelly Springfield. Get every mile you can out of life. Canada. The, Virginia, the students here at UVA with a, a not so warm reception for the Seminoles as they took the field tonight. There are a lot of remember signs around, but you don't have to remind the kids from Florida State, from Tallahassee, to remember because they knew all too well what happened in their streak ended right here in this stadium. John Allen Roberts has it teed. Jermaine Stringer and Gooch, the two deep men for Florida State, and this one's underway. At the seven-yard line, it's Gooch. Fumbles the ball, picks it up, and he will not make the 15-yard line. And let's check in down on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Ron, thanks very much. Now, maybe one of the reasons Florida State has not been able to get their ground game going yet is because they've been experimenting with so many guys in their offensive backfield. I mean, it's really been nothing less than tailback tryouts. First, Steve Feaster had his chance. Then Davey Ford. But tonight, it's Travis Miner who has one more chance to prove to Bobby Bowden that they need a good ground game if they're going to win tonight and especially down the road. He needs to play well enough, Ron, to convince his coaching staff that he really belongs back there. Okay, so we will see if Miner is the guy and if he turns into a major force here tonight. Florida State, as you can see, not good field position to open the game. And they go with Miner on a running play. Has five, has ten, he's off. If this is a test, he has just passed it, and it is an A-plus at 87 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Ron, there's nobody happier than this stadium than Bobby Bowden and Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, because they've had their woes running the football, and this is the only weakness. 
this in this football team. And they don't want to be one-dimensional. You can see Bobby, Bobby over on the sideline, very happy with Travis Miner. So the game plan was, on first down, we're going to run. And they had no idea that the extra point team would be coming out. But Janikowski will attempt the extra point. And just like that, Florida State is on the board. And we have a hushed stadium here in Charlottesville, Virginia. As the stadium clock shows, 14.36 left in this opening quarter. And the Seminoles have exploded on top. Shotgun figuring that Florida State was going to throw right off the bat. Get a hard rush by the defensive front. Get a good block by the fullback, Abdullah. Travis Miner shows you why he was the USA Player of the Year in high school. Attended the same high school at Warwick Dunn. Wore his same number. And shows you the same kind of running form. Good block by Jason Whitaker, number 68. Just stays with his block. And springs Travis Miner free. Okay, so let's regroup here as you look at the numbers career at the Catholic High School in Baton Rouge. Almost 5,052 touchdowns. What a start. George Welch, what he was hoping was that they could contain that offense and then play keep away as far as his offense and make Florida State's defense stay on the field. And he was hoping for snow tonight too, Ron, but uh, didn't get it. He wanted a cold weather game. George didn't give that quote to the Washington newspaper. He had said it yesterday to us. He hoped it was a very cool evening, which uh, it has tempered considerably. And he also told the Washington Post that he was hoping that we would have snow. Uh, neither the case. That's Wilkins back deep. Antoine Harris also with him. Janikowski to kick it off for Florida State. Boy, he really gets all of this one. Five yards deep, and they're going to return it. This is Harris. And Harris tries to hurdle a man, and he stopped at the 17-yard line. So let's uh, take a look at the starting lineup. First of all, for the Virginia Cavaliers, Aaron Brooks out of Newport News at quarterback. He'll have Kirby and Thomas Jones behind him. The uh, receivers, two very good ones, Crowell and Wilkins. The tight end, only a freshman. He'll have his hands full tonight, Bill Baber. And up front, Karzuski at left tackle is actually the only fella of the offensive line that really has much playing experience at all. Running play on first down. This is Thomas Jones. Daryl Bush is there to put the stop on him. And speaking of Bush, we will uh, look at the starters for the Seminoles. Well, this is a great group. Spires and Wadsworth on the other side, on the outside. Johnson and Larry Smith at the tackles. The linebackers, very good, very active. Cowart, Bush, and Lamont Green. And in the secondary, keep an eye on number 30. Shevin Smith, a rover who plays a lot of times three and four yards off the line of scrimmage to stop the run of the opposition. The pitch. They try to turn the corner and very nearly do it. Out to the 24, maybe the 25. Bush and Wadsworth on the stop. And it's going to be a third down Virginia. And the line to make for them is out to the 27. And Ron, both these teams, uh, Virginia's not very good on third down. As you see, 26%. Last in the ACC, Florida State leads third down defenses in the Atlantic Coast Conference. If you just joined us, that score is correct. In the first play from scrimmage, the Seminoles score. Here's the third down play, and they try a little counter play, and it looks as though they're going to have the first down. Just about at the 27, Lamont Green stops him, but it depends on the mark, and it would look like from here that he just has it. He does. Ron, this is the biggest mismatch of this ball game. It's the 90th ranked offense in college football against the number one defense. So Virginia's offense really has to come up with some big plays against Mickey Andrews' Florida State defense. Mickey, longtime assistant for Bobby Bowden, the defensive coordinator. Has been offered some head coaching jobs, but uh, he is happy in Tallahassee. Brooks first throw of the night. And Adam 
is going to be well overthrown as you can see the double coverage on Crowell. Smith was in the area along with number two Samari Roll. And that went a long way off the mark. Yeah, Larry Smith put tremendous pressure on Aaron Brooks. That's the best down to throw against Florida State. And you could see the heavy rush they had on first down. The difficult thing on Brooks is when you look at a brand new quarterback, the center is new, Lamontagne, the left guard is new, Shimon, the right guard is new. When you're totally new right up the middle with a new quarterback, like it takes a long time. That's tough, Ron, and he split time at quarterback last year, so he really isn't that experienced at the quarterback position. Virginia calls a timeout. We'll take it with him. 12.47 left in our opening period. Florida State, 7-0. They have the ball just shy of their own 28-yard line. That's Lamont Green cheating up at the line of scrimmage. First pass, second pass, actually has it complete. Crowell will have the first down, and Virginia moves the chains again. It's good for 13 yards as Tate Cody was outside with the cover. And Jermaine Crowell is the best receiver on this Virginia football team. Drop back pass. The pressure's going to come from Andre Wadsworth, but he gets the ball off. A good out route by Jermaine Crowell. He's six foot four, working against the 5'11", Tay Cody. And Tay is only a freshman out of Blakely, Georgia. In the eye formation. They give it to the tailback. No place for Jones to go. Sam Coward is right there, the senior out of Jacksonville. And he will wrap him up. Mike, the most difficult thing playing against a defense like Florida State is plays that have any wasted time are just that, wasted time, because they are so quick, they really thwart slow development, don't they? They, they really do. You're, they're so quick on defense that sometimes their quickness can work against them. But what you have to do against Florida State is you've got to protect your quarterback. And this right here is what George Welch said he didn't want to have. Second and long, third and long. Six deep in the pocket. Going to go long. Double coverage ball is tipped in. Almost intercepted. Roll was there. And also Dexter Jackson. And he had an opportunity at the tip. So now it's third down and long. Not bad protection on that play, Ron. We talked about protecting the quarterback. And they really keep the tight end in to try to help on Andre Wadsworth. So you really only have a couple receivers out. Good defense by Samari Roll. You can see number 41, Patrick Washington. He's a redshirt freshman out of Washington, D.C. He was lined up at tight end that time. He is the young man that they left in to block on the pass play. Third down, line to make is the Florida State 48. Roel is lined up at fullback. Now Watchword jumped offside, so they get a free play here. Pressure is on, and the ball just thrown away. And now, Mike, I'm looking. Yep, there is a flag. I started to say I may have been premature in the call. Jerry Johnson is the man who hit Aaron Brooks and caused the pass to go awry. All sides on the defense. Five yards. Repeat third down. Ron, sometimes when you have a good receiver and defenses jam him, you take and move him to the fullback position. Now, that's what they did with Jermaine Crowell. They lined him up at fullback. Now, here he is coming in motion so that no one can jam him at the line of scrimmage so he can get a free release down the field. Let me ask you this, Mike. If Florida State is playing with four defensive backs, then does he wind up with linebacker coverage? He, as he, normally he'll do? either get a linebacker covering or a safety which is a pretty good matchup for Virginia. Yeah, it is. Third down, about four and a half. Seven in motion as that pass comes nowhere close to anybody and a flag comes down as Sam Coward was all over him. Intentional grounding, the, the call, loss of down. And Virginia's going to have to give the football back. Still a good decision by Aaron Brooks because you're going to see Sam Cowart, number one, unblocked. I mean, there's no time to make a decision what you're going to do with the football. Throw it away. Aaron Brooks didn't have a chance to find a receiver downfield. Now, Ron, here's the difference, I think, in Florida State and all the other teams in the ACC when you go to the kicking game. The speed that they have and... Uh, 
uh, of the return people and their uh, people on the kicking team. Peter Warwick is the deep man, and he can uh, do just what his teammate did from scrimmage just a moment ago very quickly as Rotella is back to punt. They've got the return on. High kick. Spiral will not turn over. And Warwick gets outside across midfield, and he's all the way down to the 38-yard line. Good block by Tate Cody. He was one of the outside men, and he blocked the gunner coming down to give Peter Warwick a little bit of a lean. So it's a 40-yard kick and a 36-yard return. There's a timeout, 11:31 left opening quarter. We'll be right back. Again, the name that brought you the best. I think one of Adrian's tickets tonight. <laughs> Ron, Florida State, now they crossed up Virginia, but they notoriously are a first down passing team. And on the first down that they had, they ran the football, see if they come out and throw it here. Mike, that's an 87-yard run by Miner a moment ago, the fourth longest touchdown from scrimmage in Florida State history. First pass, Busby, and he zips it right by Miner. That was Dingle with pressure on the quarterback and let's take a look at the starters we didn't have a chance things happened so quickly in that first possession busby with glenn and travis minor the receivers will see six different guys tonight they're all very good green and warwick start and the tight end is outstanding melvin pearsall and up front with the offensive line interestingly enough there are two freshmen up there brandon at left tackle and haven at right guard number 78 but they are very good pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage Travis Griffith almost came up with an interception I'm not too sure he wouldn't have scored if he had gotten it Mike and this is a good defensive football team Virginia they got hit on that first play with that big run but you see the good pass rush they get out of a four-man front some twists up inside that Busby threw it right to Travis Griffith number 95 almost like you said with the interception well, that's the, the play where the tackle is trying to cut on him to get him down. And obviously, he didn't get him to, to drop low, so he almost came up with a pickup. Third down and ten. Busby going for the end zone. Got him. Touchdown, Florida State. Peter Ward just out guessed him and out jumped him. The one thing that Virginia didn't want to happen is the big play. If you're going to beat Florida State, you've got to be able to make them work the field, not give them a kick return to the 40, and then give them one home run throw here to Peter Warwick, just hanging it up against Antoine Harris, number 26. Peter Warwick shows you the kind of athlete he is, concentration and jumping up to the ball. Janikowski with the extra point is up and through and the stadium clock shows 11 14 left to play in the opening quarter and our new score Florida State 14 and UVA nothing let's take a break it is a deliberate departure from the norm 180 degrees from expected Spacious leather-trimmed interior, available heated front seats, and now it ties as J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing minivan. The new Chrysler Town & Country LXI, built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Looking for the answer to one of life's toughest questions? Drive into Sonic for dinner. We make everything fresh to order, then serve it up hot, fast, and ready to go. Like our chicken strip dinner with fries, Texas toast, and gravy. Our new country fried steak fingers dinner. And our new golden fried shrimp dinner. Complete dinners, ready to go. How to speak Australian. Remote control. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000 mile all season steel belted tires at an incredible low $99. That's right, any size, any four 35,000 mile tires, just $99. At Pep Boys, now. 
Purdue's Edwin Watson goes end zone to end zone with Iowa's elusive tailback, Tavian Banks. Purdue versus Iowa, next Saturday at 12.30 on ESPN2. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator for the Virginia Cavaliers, has to be in somewhat of a state of shock as he visits with his guys on the sideline because, Mike, actually they had him in a situation they wanted, third down a 10, and you give up the home run. That's This Florida State team looks like it was in the locker room watching a tape of when they were here last and lost that ball game. They have come out with fire in their eyes. Peter Warwick, and as you look at uh, Sebastian Janikowski, Daytona. Here's the kick. And this one he is going to shank out of bounds. So the Cavs will take it over at the 35-yard line. Coach Bowden is going to come down and have a couple of words with him. And the one thing he said yesterday, he really likes this young man. He said every once in a while that he'll do just that. It's like when you try to overswing in golf, he comes across it and really shanks the ball. So he's down to, to have a conversation with him. He also said, well, he's only been in this country four years. And he said he thought that if the young man had learned football from like junior high days like most other kids, that he's a good enough athlete that he might have played another position. Coaches said that he was the best athlete when they all came in as the freshman class, and he was right among the best athletes. He weighs 260, which obviously is very big for a kicker. 14 to nothing, Florida State. Running play right up the middle, and there's just nothing for Thomas Jones, the sophomore of Big Stone Gap, Virginia. Daryl Bush is the first man to grab him. I was just thinking, Ron, weighing 260, if he ever wins a game by the field goal, he'll be tough to get up. You know, usually <laughs> his kickers are small, but this guy is huge. Well, you just salute guys like this, Mike. Uh, let me ask you a question. If you're a head coach on the sideline or coordinator on the sideline, and if you're Virginia, what are you saying to your club right now, Mike, to calm them down? Well, there's, there's, you just need to perform right now to execute and make some plays. That's all that needs to happen now. Draw play. And very quickly, Terry, Jerry Johnson, I should say, and Daryl Bush close up the hole. And he'll make the stop at the 40. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Two plays in a row there, Ron, proves that number 44 still takes that loss here two years ago very personally. All week long this week, he would not allow his teammates to forget how they felt when they lost their first ever and only game in the ACC since they joined this conference in 92. But tonight, he says, we got the number one defense in the nation. For the third consecutive year now, he's a Butkus Award semifinalist. His goal is don't let Virginia score a single point. Then he can begin to forget. Now there are a couple of other don't dare forget situations. Spike Dykes, big win for his club today over Texas A&M. As Brooks sets up, he's going to run. And he can be very dangerous. Loses the ball. The official said, nope. It bounced off the ground, but where he's giving him the spot, Mike, is not nearly enough for the first down. No, it looks like he passed that point. But they spotted him back, and he will not have the first down and forced a punt. Well, the good news is they did not call it a fumble, so he didn't lose it, which he would have. Now, the bad news the bad is he didn't get the first down. Yeah. Now, the bad news is they're punting to Peter Warwick again. Samari Roll with the hit. And he may have lost the ball back there. Oh, if he's going to call the ball loose, then he had to back it up to that spot. Melitore's knee went down as Rotella stands by to punt again. Last kick was 40 yards, and the return was 36. And he comes over the top of this one. Headed for the sideline, there'll be no return. It's out of bounds. A primetime game next Saturday night on ESPN. Ava Zeroway leads the 20th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers up to the Dome in Syracuse to take on the Orangemen, who are back in the national rankings this week. It's a battle for the Big East next Saturday, 7.30 on ESPN. Big win for West Virginia today, knocking off Virginia Tech. And that sets Syracuse up to, to get back in this race. Not the first time that we would have gone to the Dome to do that series, and it's always a very spirited rivalry up here. 14 to nothing, Florida State on top, just under nine to play, first quarter. They fake the play that they scored on in first down. Busby's pass got him wide open, 45 at the 50, E.G. Green, and he is gone. 74 yards. That was his pass to play to E.G. Green for a touchdown. 
Well, folks, if ever a boxing match, we'd be heading home right now. Well, you asked me the other, just a little bit ago, what would you tell your team is save the equipment at this point because this football team is coming out here to make a statement. Now, they lost their only ACC game here, and everybody's talked about this return visit here. But Bobby Bowden and his coaching staff has this football team, E.G. Green catching this route for a touchdown. They've got them on uh, ready. Janikowski with the extra point, and what's 8.44 left in the opening period, it is Florida State, 21 to nothing. We'll be right back. In the ACC, games are 10 points or less, three. So Virginia has really risen to the occasion against this Florida State football team. This is where you have Sparky Woods, the offensive coordinator, George Welsh. Got to worry about a turnover here. Get the ball out of the end zone. Well, that's what they do is Brooks takes it straight ahead on the sneak. Coward is underneath there to, uh, to stop him. Clock still running. We're about to hit a minute and a half to play in this opening quarter, and it's been a long one because of all the passing and scoring. Here's, here's the things you think of is Paul Shadell right there with the orange sweatshirt on. You think about, first of all, you want to get a first down down here. You need a safe play because of the quickness of the Florida State defense. You mentioned it. Second thing is you want to get it out of here because you don't want to punt it out of here because Florida State and Peter Warwick could be right back down knocking on the goal line. So you've got to take some chances down here. What they're going to throw out of the end zone. He stepped out. That's a safety. He stepped out of the back of the end zone, and it will be a safety against the Virginia Cavaliers. Did not realize where he was. Wow. No, he never, never knew where the line was back there. Did not have the awareness of where the back line was and just stepped over it. Now the problem becomes you're kicking from the 20-yard line to Florida State. Put a lot of pressure on you with their speed. Aaron Brooks retreating back. See him step right out of the end zone. Right there. And didn't have a lot of pressure on him. No, he didn't. Put Simon put was still about there. three yeah. yards away from him or so. But... Uh, he just almost kind of la lackadaisical as he as he uh, sprinted out or rolled out. Well, we talked about the inexperience. Now, that's three intentional groundings. I don't agree with those, but the safety, uh, I do agree with. And I do agree with one of the intentional groundings. I watched the game this afternoon where the quarterback would have been better served to throw it a little higher outside, too. Isn't that the truth? Keep it in that bounds. You're taking chance of an interception. You always coach your quarterbacks, throw it out. Throw it away. You're talking about the Michigan-Michigan State game. Yes, I mean, sir. Woodson, you know, I, I have to think Woodson jumped himself right back in into a candidate for the Heisman Trophy with the outing he had and what he's been doing all year. It's got to be in the top three. You know, the publicity that he's getting, the play that he's given on the field. And he's been outstanding. So Rotella to kick it away. Warwick and Colds back in a in a dual safety. 23 to 7 to Florida State. That's Warwick, number nine. Fired away his best kick. All the way back to the 15-yard line. Warwick. So actually, the worst field position that Florida State has had all night was after the opening kickoff when they had it at their own 13-yard line, and all they did was run the ball 87 yards from scrimmage and score a touchdown there. going in the Pac-10, Washington trailing to Oregon, 10-7 right now. Must be something in the air in Washington tonight. Busby, play action, sets deep, going to go long. Incomplete, Phelan almost took it away from Warwick, almost got the interception. More than any team I've watched play in the last five, eight years, Florida State throws the ball up for grabs a lot down the field. 
Here, Peter Warwick, who's six foot tall, is going against Stephen Phelan, the safety, and he puts it up for grabs for Peter Warwick, so it becomes a jump ball. Peter Warwick almost held on. Good defense by Stephen Phelan. Mike, the numbers on Busby tonight, he's two of seven for 112 yards. Both of those completions good for touchdowns. There's pressure on him, gets a pass complete, defensive back gambled, and it's going to cost him as Green is going to take it across midfield to the 47. Burn him on the stop. Ron, the other thing, when you play against Florida State, the yards after the catch. Now, we, we, we're going to keep track of them tonight. Once they catch the football, and already we've seen big yards after the catch by E.G. Green, but once they catch the football, if you just tackle them, yards after the catch tonight, 65 right now hitting yards. But if you just tackle them, that's the point that you've got to be able to play Florida State. Ball is knocked out at the line of scrimmage, and that's Travis Griffin, the sophomore out of Stockton, Virginia, just right down the road here from uh, Charlottesville. And as he gets the deflection, that's twice he's gotten his hand on the football tonight. I'm saying making the tackle, but the tough thing about these guys, they're so good of athletes, and they've got so much speed. Out in space, it's very difficult. But if you're going to beat them, you have to beat them. You do not allow many yards after the catch. Should be the last play of the first quarter. And they give it to Travis Miner, and Miner's going to be stopped after a gain of a couple. Allegby is there to make the tackle, and that will be the end of the opening quarter. So let's take a timeout with our score. Florida State, number three ranked in the nation, has come vaulting out of the gates. 23-7, to they lead Virginia. State Farm. Opening quarter. And Florida State did some kind of work. They scored 21 points in five plays and utilized. They only took one minute off the clock in those 21 points they scored. Busby gets it away quickly. Pass is tipped. And that's Donnie Green who got a hand on this one. Three times tonight, the Cavaliers have tipped the pass by Busby. Had success bringing the outside linebackers. Donnie Green again, number 33, getting his hands up, knocking the football. They got the quick screen on right here. But the number 33, Donnie Green with the quick hands, deflects the ball and forces Florida State to punt the football. Two kicks, 36 yards is what the average is for Keith so far tonight. Fair catch called for and is made by Wilkins. And he made that catch at the six-yard line. So again, Virginia taking over deep in their own territory. Well, uh, some of the, the partisans here tonight uh, go Hoos, but it's, it was a long first quarter for the Hoos. Yeah, and a lot of big plays by Florida State. Virginia's settled down now on defense, but now their offense has to pick it back up against a very, very good and quick Florida State defense. You, you mentioned it. They're in trouble right here, field position. This is what Mickey Andrews and Bobby Bowden will do to you, and they'll take it all night long. And that's play defense, punt the ball down, make you scrimmage from deep in your own territory and then set up the offense. That's what you call playing in really good harmony, and that's what they've done so far tonight. Crowell asking uh, the officials for a marker, thought that maybe he was interfered with. Ron, everything starts on defense with Andre Wadsworth, number 85. He's the best defensive player. He's the best defensive lineman in the country. So you've got to be, make sure you've got him blocked. Second down of 10, they try to go with the running play, and Thomas Jones is just not able to go anywhere. Wadsworth on the sideline. It was Rackley who made the tackle. And actually what has happened, it appears that uh, you see Spires in the sideline as well. Now that group about to come back in with the pass rush situation. Nope, they called him back. I, they're giving their number twos. The, the number twos are giving the number ones a breather. A lot of coaches will do this. When the ball's back inside the 20, they'll bring in their second team defensive line to give them a little bit of work. And now a timeout is called. 
So let's take a break. 23 to 7. Florida State leads. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus Virginia, is brought to you by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. We also have the capacity crowd here at Charlottesville and the situation. They have a third down. We're in the second quarter, just about a minute deep. They're down and they need to take the ball out to the 17 yard line. Bush. Daryl Bush got a hand on it at the line of scrimmage. He had five tackles at the end of the first quarter. And he comes through and knocks that one down. And it is kicking time for Virginia. And here we go with what we just talked about. Play defense, punt it down deep, special teams take advantage. And Ron, this is a slow developing blitz right here. And you see Daryl Bush come in and get his hands on the football. Tony Bryant was blitzing up inside number 40. But they have decided long time ago to go after Aaron Brooks and try to speed up his delivery. Uh, Rotella kicking it away. Warwick is back deep. He's dropped off to the 43. They got uh, the pressure on, and they knocked down the kicker, but there's no flag. A very poor kick, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And Rotella from flat of his back saying, where's the flag? 27 yards on that boot. And let's take a look at Frank Rotella, number 31. Here's what he sees. No, no he's no, a it's Charlton a Heston <laughs> award right there. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't even give him that award. That was poor acting. <laughs> yeah, the officials were right there, and they, they didn't see any contact, and really there was none. So again, Florida State with great field position. Busby gets it away from low, and it is uh, complete to Travis Miner out of the backfield. Let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Nebraska pouring it on. There's a little light rain. Snow is expected in in a little bit in Lawrence. Joel Magovica, 18-yard touchdown here. Flag was on the Jayhawks. Game's being delayed. A bank of lights went out. Kansas having its lights knocked out. Well, that's, that's the truth. You know, Mike, it seems like there's been a Magovica at Nebraska ever since I can remember. There, it's... A lot of Mack trucks out there. I yeah. know that. They've yep. got a great program. Quick throw. Got this one complete. And that's Pearsall, the tight end I talked about. Pearsall catching the football, being utilized a lot more this year as there's a flag down back behind Busby, and we'll check that. He really has been used a lot more, Ron. Eight pass receptions going into this game. Roughing the passer on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. See if we tag Busby. Oh, yes. Day late and a dollar short. Wally Allegbe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he... Uh, that one was way late. Just over 13 to play until halftime. And the Seminoles again on the lip of the cup. 23-7. to 7, They already lead it. That's minor in motion. And they throw to him, didn't come up on the cover, and he is close to the first down at the six-yard line as Williams finally made the tackle. Well, they spread you all over the football field. Then they move Travis Miner out of the backfield against the linebacker, so they really get some advantages with the no-back set. And what really helps him run is Melvin Pearsall is like a wide receiver, so when they go to one-back set, they really have four receivers in there counting Pearsall. But they also got the blocker to run the football. Second down and short, and they go with the running play. And he is going to lose a yard. Miner hit by Dingle. Antonio Dingle, a junior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Great story on Antonio Dingle. He was homesick as a freshman. He called home. He says, Mama, come get me. She said just real quickly, you can't come home. I'm changing the locks. I love you. And hung up. <laughs> and it's the best thing she probably ever told him. He's going to wind up getting his degree here, playing college football at, uh, at UVA. And he didn't practice Thursday round. He had a sprained ankle, so he didn't get any practice time. But he's, he's a gamer tonight. Third down. They need to take it to the four. 
Swings it up, got Miner again, and he's close, but I don't know if he got the first down. That's good tackling. Stephen Faven is the guy who came up to get him, and you would look for the Seminoles to go for it here. A nice job right here. Travis Miner getting the ball out of the backfield. Stephen Phelan, the former walk-on, 49, first to hit him, and uh, got some help from his friends. And now Florida State wants to call a timeout, so we'll take it with him. 11 on 4 left until halftime. Seminoles by 16. Right back. House coming to life because it is a fourth down for the Seminoles. The ball at the 5, and they need to take it to the 4. Travis Griffin at Griffith and Company trying to shore it up here. Busby gives it straight ahead. They not only get the first down, they almost got the touchdown. Whitaker and Long with great blocks on the play. And Abdullah very close to scoring the touchdown. First and goal, Seminole. Well, Mark Rick says about Long, the center, number 51. He's the glue and the leadership that's kept our offense together. And he gets a nice block. It's good block by Whitaker, as you talked about, 68. And a good push out of that offensive line. Good Mark Lynn also, yeah. Yeah, number 31. On the same play with the push he got there. Abdullah, touchdown Florida State. George Welch's club now down 29 to 7 with the extra point attempt to come by Janikowski. He got it right down the middle. So with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left until halftime, our new score, Florida State 30 and Virginia 7. Well, for the third straight year now, Burger King will recognize outstanding student athletes through the $1 million Burger King College Football Scholarship Program. Tonight's Burger King students of the game are from Florida State, linebacker Daryl Bush, a graduated senior with a 398 GPA in business. And from Virginia, defensive back Stephen Phelan, also a graduated senior with a 3.69 in history. Scores coming in, and that overtime game as Arizona went for two. Oklahoma State falls, second overtime, they lose to Missouri. Also in overtime, Pitt wins over Rutgers. There's a big rivalry right there. Cincinnati beating Miami, Ohio, that's a big win for the Bearcats. Five overtimes in all, Mike. Interesting this weekend that, uh, you know, all of a sudden we come up with that many overtime games. The majority of those went to the second overtime. Cincinnati's getting a lot of practice. That's two weeks in a row for them in overtime. That's Wilkins back deep, number seven you were looking at. Has some distant stairs kind of coming off that bench from the defensive unit of the Virginia Cavaliers as they have been thrashed in the first 20 minutes of this football game. Coaches came in to Bobby Bowden and said, we want you to look at some video on a kicker. And he said, we already got a kicker on scholarship. We don't need two. And he said, come look. He went in and looked and said, guys, let's uh, get on a plane and go to Daytona. And the rest is history. He's got a good pop. Doesn't hit this one for real well, but this return from the 11-yard line. And they bring it back to the 25. It's Terrence Wilkins. Well, coming up on Monday night at 7.30 Eastern, NFL Primetime. Join Mike Tirico and company for 90 minutes of nonstop NFL news features and analysis, leading you up to ABC's Monday Night Football. And this week, a rematch of last year's Super Bowl as Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers take on the New England Patriots. Monday Night Football, 9 o'clock on ABC. Well, Virginia needs a drive right here out of Aaron Brooks. This is the second best starting field position for Virginia tonight. As Southern is in the ball game, and Anthony 
takes it straight ahead. I wondered, that ball is loose. Was the play dead or does Florida State have it? The officials kind of looking at one another. We don't have anything definitive yet. Cody was on the football. Now they got 44 pieces of advice going right now. I don't think they still made a call. Well, the Florida State defense has left the field, so somebody better say something definitive. Florida State football. Tate Cody with the recovery. Well, let's see if we can pick it up here, Ron. There it is. Yeah, Spires ripped it out of there, I think, Mike. See if he was down. No. Well, I was just about to say they put Southern in the game because he weighs 240 to get a bigger back of the game. But they strip him of the football. So uh, still not out of harm's way. Shotgun formation for Busby. Going to go on top. Looking the far sideline and almost intercepted and dropped by Joe Williams. This again, Ron, when you play Florida State, Joe Williams, who's a small corner at 5'11". Now, he hurt his knee in the Wake Forest game, returning an interception. He's playing with a knee brace on, number 23. Gets spun around on Peter Warwick and... Dad Busby just throws that ball up for a jump ball situation. Peter lost it there for a second, kind of gave up on it when he lost it. You can see that brace that Williams is wearing on his knee. Four possessions starting in Virginia territory tonight. Busby throws to the short man. That's Pearsall, his tight end, and he's going to be pushed back. Dwayne Stoops is the man on the tackle. And you know somebody we have not mentioned all night, and he is always so prominent when you talk about the Virginia defense, and that is Poindexter, Mike. Well, you know what happens to, to Poindexter in this kind of ball game? They spread him out. So all of a sudden now he becomes a pass defender, and, and he is a good pass defender, but he's more of a giver in the run game. The that pass flag. is complete, uh, incomplete to Warwick, and you can see the marker from down the way. Maybe offensive. Yep, they're going to call it on Peter Warwick. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, the reason you and Coach haven't mentioned Anthony Poindexter's name very much is very simple because he hasn't played a whole lot since the first or second series. On the very first play from scrimmage on that uh, run by Travis Miner to the end zone, he was cut, hurt his right ankle this time. He's been nursing a left ankle injury the last couple of weeks. Potentially both of them sprained. He may not play anymore tonight. Good to get the word, Adrian. Well, you lose an All-American like Anthony Poindexter. Started here in his first year as a linebacker. Wanted to go back to safety. Idolized Ronnie Lott. Wanted to be that kind of safety. But as Adrian said, picked up a, an injury in his first half. This is going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt by Janikowski. Actually, they have moved back beyond the 35. Good pass, and he's well off to the right and no good. So, Florida State has not had many drives that have gone bad tonight, but that one right there it did, and they had it in good field position. Nine minutes and 25 seconds left until halftime. Florida State 30 and Virginia 7. Janikowski on the sideline, chewing on that mouthpiece, off the mark in his 46-yard attempt. Brooks sets in the pocket, going to go long. Got a man there. Throw out. Inside the 35. 
Saunders will push him out of bounds. They're going to stay at the 31 yard line. Good for 41. Ron, good pressure again by Andre Wadsworth. Aaron Brooks is maturing as a quarterback. Stood right in there again. Hit Jermaine Crow on the on the pass pattern. You're going to see the pressure first by number 85, Andre Wadsworth. Just getting right to the quarterback. Banging him after he throws. Good route by Jermaine Crowell. Got behind Troy Saunders. So it's first down, Cavaliers. They have the ball just outside the Florida State 31-yard line. Got him. Somebody blew a coverage. Good heavens, and Thomas Jones dropped the football. So they got linebacker coverage, or got no coverage, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Ghost was on him, Thomas Jones, because man coverage, somebody didn't pick him up coming out of the backfield. Oh, it's number Coward. one, yeah. Coward let him go. All of a sudden, he read the screen. Now, here's what happens on the other end. Andre Wadsworth with good pressure. Pretty good job by Robert Hunt, but now Andre Wadsworth gets to the feet of Aaron Brooks. Boy, that was six, if he can hold on. Comes back to the running play, and Coward... One of the first men there to hit him along with Spires. That's what happens in a game again. You, you've got to find a way to run the football against them. Florida State because they're so difficult if you have to throw against them all evening. You put so much pressure on your quarterback to be the position guy to win this game. And uh, very, very difficult for Aaron Brooks in this situation unless he gets a running game going with him. Third down conversions. Two out of six. So they've had the third and long situation that I told you Coach Welch said we cannot prosper out of. Hit and sacked and it's Wadsworth. Andre Wadsworth got through to make the tackle. Coward was in the area, but it will go to Wadsworth, who has now surpassed his sack total of what he had for his career just this year. And he said he loves it outside. He played defensive tackle inside last year with Renard Wilson and Peter Bowler on the outside. He said he likes it a lot better. Wasn't doubled much at the beginning of the year, but now people are starting to put two people on him to block him. So Rotella comes on to punt. Fifth time that he will have kicked in his first half. And we are just now to the midway point of the second quarter. Gaining three is going to have to get new whistles at halftime. Dead ball. Delay of the game. On the offense. Penalty has declined. Fourth down. Florida State declines it, and they'll ask him to punt it from the 40, hoping that Rotella will uh, hit it too strongly and knock it into the end zone. side of his foot not very far and now takes a Florida State bounce and this thing is out and around the original line of scrimmage which is the 31 a 10-yard punt so let's take a timeout 726 until halftime all Florida State Thirty to seven, Florida State has stormed on top here in the first quarter. I mean, even the hill in the north end zone, there are not many spots open there. The stands are filled, the hill is packed, and they're here to see what they hoped would be a reenactment of what happened two years ago. Hasn't occurred. Busby lets this one get away, and now the crowd you knew they were going to ask. Then here comes the flag. I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. The pass got away from him. <laughs> This, this, this can't be grounded. Well, he can't bring this flag back or he will get booed right out of here. <laughs> and he might. Oh, my. He is going to get booed right here, Disregard folks. Disregard the flag. There was a man in the area. Suck it down. Not a popular person. 
But this is a ball thrown, as you said, it gets away from uh, Thad Busby's Peter Warwick's over here. I think any ball, as you mentioned well, in the first half, I mean, back in the first quarter, two of those passes against Brooks probably should not have been played. I think Aaron not Brooks, picking on the officials, yeah. but that's a play that should be given. Well, Aaron Brooks is going to say, I'll give you my helmet, you give me your whistle, <laughs> you show me how to do it then. Yeah. This is Minor, breaks it to the outside, turns that corner and has the first down. Let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron and Mike in conversation with a couple of the offensive coaches prior to kickoff. They think that Travis Minor literally is a player or two away from where Warwick Dunn was from a confidence level every single time Warwick touched the ball. And if you consider the way that Minor has played tonight, caught some passes, he's come out of the backfield, he's been in motion, it's kind of the same way that Warwick Dunn played. It's the confidence level. He needs the ball in his hands some more. It's just convincing Bobby Bowden once again that he gets the ball. Well, Adrian, that's true, but the other thing he has to prove, and he may have it, but the other thing that Warwick had was a heart that not many people could equal. Straight ahead with the handoff, and that'll go for four. Tweet on the bottom of the pile. And Warwick Dunn has taken it to the next level in sure the pros, he and he's proved to everybody, you know, that uh, he can play and play with the best of them. He was a great college football player, but he's a great person, too, and so... Yep. Uh, Miner's got some big shoes yeah, to fill. Yeah, he really does. He really does. But not to say that the young man might not be able to do it. No, but he's got a ways to go. Warwick Dunn did it in the big games. 12 rushes, 18 passes. Good mix. Miner, great job. Comes out across the 35. He's to the 38. That's Phelan on the tackle. And Florida State showing a propensity now to try to run the football more but Mike talk about what the cornerbacks do with Virginia because Bobby Bowden mentioned yesterday he said we don't see another scheme like this they don't come up and bump but they don't play off like zone they play somewhere in between which makes it a far more difficult read they sit on the uh, the pattern as you fade it with the receivers like a lot of teams do they'll sit on that fade and give a little ground to try to throw off the quarterback Miner's not going anywhere on this one. In fact, he may have lost a half yard on the play. Isabel defensively. What Bobby Bowden's done now, and Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, they've talked about this now with a 30-7 to lead. Now let's find out about a running game. Now they, they've got a great offensive tackle in Trey Thomas. A lot of people think he's going to be in the top five in the draft, and Mel Kuyper has him high. 6'8", 330, number 70. Now, you can't run behind him. You can't run. And he's beside Melvin Pierce all there, so they've got a pretty good running uh, side to go to on that right side. Busby has to throw that one quickly, and Abdullah drops it. Boy, you could see the pressure coming on him. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. About and on ESPN, about and on ESPN 2. Terry's Tigers, Auburn, leading Arkansas by nine. When Damian Craig hits Karsten Bailey, talking about yards after the catch. A lot of them here, 70-yard touchdown. Auburn driving again, leading by 16 over on the deuce. Thanks, Michael. Mike, that's Yak. Yards after the catch, and we're seeing a lot of them tonight here. Third down, 11. The line to make is down at the Virginia 32-yard line. Seminoles lead it 30 to 7. Five minutes to play until halftime. Busby looking, looking, nobody there. They're going to ask for intentional grounding again, but there's not going to be a flag. <laughs> well, the crowd's now getting into this one, and George ripped his head off. <laughs> You know you've had an intentional groundings call when the fans are starting to give the signal <laughs> to the referee. Oh, my. Cottrell standing back to kick. Got Wilkins deep. This is the fourth time that he has punted tonight. And Wilkins, whoa, he almost lost that thing in the lights. Makes the fair catch at the 14. 44 yards in the punt. Coming up next Saturday on ESPN2 at 12.30 Eastern, the surprising Boilermakers of Purdue take on the Iowa Hawkeyes and their dynamic duo of Tavian Banks and Tim Dwight, who had an outstanding day today. And then it's 15th ranked LSU looking to stop another up-and-comer, Tim Couch and the Kentucky Wildcats, all next week on The Deuce.
So Virginia again taking over the football with poor field position. It has been a difficult situation for the offense, and it really kind of ties the hands of the offensive coordinator. Sparky Woods can't call what he would call if he were out at his own 40 or midfield. Yeah, but there comes a point, Ron, when you're down 30 to 7, let it loose. I mean, what's the <laughs> difference? Uh, and now, and that's, I'm sure, what Sparky's trying to do. He doesn't want to, you're right, well, he doesn't want to lose his quarterback, Aaron Brooks' confidence. Look at this. Average field position, 18, compared to Florida State's own 44. Looks in the pocket, has time, and throws into double coverage. It's going to be intercepted. That's Samari Roll. And that's up at the 45-yard line. Well, that's just what you were talking about. But you, you, when you're down 30-7, to you got to take some shots, but not that kind of read. You don't want to throw into Jermaine Crowell, and then all of a sudden Mickey Andrews is sitting on the other side, and he's double covering him, and Samari Roll picks it off and gives uh, Thad Busby another chance with 4.01 to go. Well, Roll showed great athletic ability there, as you can see, not only make the reception, but cognizant of where he was to make sure he got a foot down. roll 25 tackles his third interception Florida State has now started five of its nine drives tonight in Virginia territory that one's overthrown and is intercepted that's Phelan and he will bring it back across the 40-yard line so not a good sequence for Busby missing badly on his first down pass no not a bad interception by the walk-on Stephen Phelan out of Montgomery Alabama PA announcer there for his high school games. Chet Moeller played for George Wilson Navy and called him and, and set up the walk-on ability of Stephen Phelan to come to Virginia, and it's paid off. Now he's an outstanding defensive back here for George Welsh. So Virginia improved their field position considerably. and there Spires. Second sack tonight. The bookends have him. Wadsworth got the first and now Spires, the right defensive end, gets the second one. You know what? Florida State's done a nice job of bringing defensive linemen along. Ron, what they'll do is younger pass defensive linemen, they'll move them inside like the defensive ends. They'll move them inside on third and long to give them a little experience. And that's how Greg Spires started. All of a sudden, on third down, he played defensive tackle. Well, now he's earned the right to go outside. He's against Doug Karczewski, number 79, with a sack. But that's how they get experience and get more defensive linemen coming along. Five hurries, five knockdowns, two sacks. Timeout, Virginia. 3.07 left until halftime, and we'll take the break with them. Florida State by 23. is to bring ideas to life. To enrich young minds and gently guide. It is pondering ancient verities and finding new truths. It is making the world a better place by sharing what we know. That's what it is to be a professor at Florida State University. The dream begins here. It's just part of my game. I just like to hit. Just a great feeling. Just, just knock someone out like that. Get the crowd on their feet or whatever. I mean, hit a woo and a in the crowd. I mean, just, just a good feeling. They come from big cities and small towns, and they've been doing it for 45 years in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Watch their dreams come true with ACC football. 7 left until intermission. Florida State owning this one in the first half. Quick out pass. It is caught by Southern. And then there's just nowhere to run. He's going to have to fight to get back to the original line of scrimmage as Roll and Bush are out there to make the stop. And also you could see Wadsworth, number 85. Ron, this is the pass play that they hit early against man coverage, Florida State. But now watch. The difference now sending the motion is it's zone coverage now they're sitting in zones and now they'll break up on the football so now all of a sudden you got a bad call 
against what Florida State's doing defensively. They caught him in man before, but caught him in zone that play. Well, you could see number 85, Andre Wadsworth, hustling out there to assist on the tackle to really punish the ball carrier. That's great hustle by a big lineman. That pass thrown complete. And that's complete to Brian Olin, senior out of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. And that will move the chains, and the clock is stopped with 2.18 remaining until halftime. Ron Brian Owens, another former walk-on. He came out for the team, ran a 4-6, and everybody was so impressed with him that they kept him off to the football team and eventually gave him a scholarship. That was a good play by Aaron Brooks. The crowd wanted him to run, but he had the presence to find the receiver and threw the ball to him for the first down. You know, that's a normal inclination of a player. George Welch told us yesterday they can't get him to run enough. He stays back and tries to throw the pass, and he is such a good athlete, they'd like for him to run it more. Sets in the pocket, hit from behind just as the ball was being thrown. Howard picked it up, but it was Roland Seymour who cracked him from behind and caused the pass to be errantly thrown. A little delay on that call, so Andre Wadsworth with some pressure from the outside. The pressure on Aaron Brooks. Andre Wadsworth, Roland Seymour, number 56 with a hit. And Cowart was licking his chops. Nick offside. So the clock shows 146 left until halftime. Again, Brooks from a shotgun formation. Sex pressure is there, hit by Wadsworth, and he is sacked again. Ron, I don't know if he's not hurt on that play. He was hit around the knee by Andre Wadsworth. He came around the corner and really hit the legs of Aaron Brooks. Adrian, let's check in with you again. Guys, this is the signature of the Seminole defense this year, number one in the nation. You need to know something. They have knocked a quarterback out of a game the last five games in a row. Now, obviously, you can see much uh, pain. Brooks does not want to come out of the game, but he's going to have to here for it, uh, probably the rest of this series, and I'll get the injury update. But he has been hit almost every single every play, guys. Even when he doesn't pass the ball hands off, they've hit him almost every single play. He's getting gun shy back there. David Ryber is a redshirt freshman out of Augusta. They're going to take a timeout just to get uh, David Ryber set on the sideline. Dan Ellis, you could see him throwing on the sideline, number 16. He is a freshman out of Exton, Pennsylvania. But it will be Rivers who will come in now. You spell it like Rivers, but pronounced Rivers, 6'3", 220. Comes from the land of Great Gulf, Augusta, Georgia. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, we are waiting for the Buick Century halftime report, at which time we'll talk about the four top 25 teams knocked off, check out how the new number one Nebraska is doing tonight, and Chris Lee and Kirk join us from East Lansing. Buick Century halftime report in about a minute and a half of clock time. Back to you. Okay, Mike, and, and this ball game, that could be a century. <laughs> this is almost a two-hour long first half, which is when you get two teams that throw the ball a lot, it goes without saying. If you have many incompletions, it takes a while, but there have been a lot of stoppages. It's been kind of herky-jerky. In the interim, here's another look. As Wadsworth comes in, he was falling, and he makes the tackle on Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks looks good on the sideline, O'Ron, walking up and down, so maybe it'll be a situation where he'll go in after one play. But he's back talking to the, to the doctor, so... Ellis has come in. It was Rivers initially, and now it's going to be Dan Ellis, number 16, the freshman out of Exton, Pennsylvania. And they like this kid, Dan Ellis. Now, they have, they have high hopes for Dan Ellis, the quarterback. Runs out of the pocket, and it's going to be caught from behind, and Larry Smith will sack him. And on the sideline, they are sending Brooks onto the locker room. The trainers came up and said, head on in. I have a feeling that they will uh, take a closer look at that knee during the intermission, but they want him to go on in there and get ahead of uh, the mad rush that's about to come in about 60 seconds. So we'll get a report 
as uh, he comes back out in the second half on the extent of his knee injury. And Ron, this might be a good time just to, to throw something short with uh, Ellis just to give him a little confidence. And they're going to try to bomb him with a Hail Mary here. Well, that's what they're lined up for. Of pushing and shoving, and that was a pretty hard bump that Ellis received on the play. I tell you, if you, again, when you play Florida State, you can't be intimidated. This is no place for the weak of heart. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards, third down. Because Florida State likes to intimidate you, they really get after you. So following the sack and now a five-yard penalty, it's going to be third down. And the line to make is all the way down at the 35-yard line. Well, Virginia, six penalties in this first half. Better hurry. Got it away. That's Wilkins. And he has the first down. And Mike, at the end of the play, Ellis got whacked. Ron, you, you, you were talking about he better get it away, but good presence in the pocket by Dan Ellis. He waited till Terrence Wilkins came open. Clock starts 26, now 25 seconds. They ground it to stop the clock. 26 is what the clock shows right now. And they're out of timeouts, Virginia, so... Clock management's important. Now here's where Dan Ellis held on to the football till the open receiver. Wilkins came free. Sam Coward with a good hit. Number seven, Terrence Wilkins coming inside. Florida State thought it was going to be Hail Mary. All the receivers going deep. Well, let's see if they come with an all-out blitz again. Nope, they stay at home. And again, there was movement, I believe, on the offensive line. He's trying to get that little cheat step back against Wadsworth and Spires. Dead ball. Delay of the game on the offense. Five yards. Second down. In a sloppy first half for Virginia. Yeah, I tell you, it's a good thing we gained an extra hour tonight. This one could go beyond midnight. <laughs> Wilkins and that is a nice job Smith. Shevin Smith just came up quickly and knocked him down. And they've got to kill this, kill this football. Nine seconds, eight seconds, throws it down, he'll stop it. He'll have seven ticks left and stand by for Hail Mary. A few of them set on the sidelines tonight the way they're getting hit. So seven seconds left. That's how long we have before we'll take it to Mike Tirico, who will update you with everything going on today in the world of sports, particularly in college football. As Florida State with a 23-point lead right now. they got to get rid of seven seconds before they head to the locker room. Virginia trying desperately to put it in the end zone, and he's going to be sacked again. This time it is Spires. So Spires has two sacks in the first half. Wadsworth with one. And it is intermission time as they head to the locker room. Florida State 30 and Virginia 7. Now with the Buick Century Halftime Report, let's join Mike Tirico. Michael? All right, Ron and Mike, thanks. Plain and simple, different class of athletes in that first half and what you expected from Florida State and Virginia, to be quite honest. Seminoles lead by 23. Coming up on the Buick Century Halftime Report, a record day. More overtimes today than we've had since the rules been in effect in college football. Also, shakeups in the standings in the Big East and the Big 12. Oklahoma State was unbeaten. Did Missouri do something to change that? And how about the day for Charles Woods and Chris Lee and Kirk? Join us from East Lansing for the Buick Century Halftime Report after this. Takes on Missouri. Remember, Missouri beat Texas last week. Early fourth quarter. Tigers up 30 to 22. But Oklahoma State, Tony Lindsay to Alonzo Mays completes a comeback from down 23 to tie the game at 30. Oklahoma State took the lead 37-30. But Corby Jones to Ricky Ross, 38-yard touchdown. We're going to overtime. 
After a touchdown and extra point in the first overtime for each team to the second overtime, it's Corby Jones. The QB is passing better, still has the great beat, runs it in. 51-44 Mizzou. Oklahoma State would answer, though. It is Lindsey rolling right and just gets inside the pylon. 51-50. Bob Simmons says go for two out of the swinging gate. It worked earlier in the game. Did not work here. And Larry Smith emotional after the game. His Missouri team is 5-3. and three. They hand Oklahoma State a first loss of the season. Oklahoma State came back from down 30-7, to seven, but not enough as Missouri gets the victory in the Big 12. Arizona, Washington State. Washington State, another undefeated team going to OT. Arizona wins the coin toss, playing D first. So Ryan Leaf and company really going to work hard to get it down the field. Get the touchdown and the extra point to take the lead. Arizona tries to answer. Fourth and 14, looks like they're about done, but pass interference is called new life for the Cats. Another fourth down, fourth and two. Ortez Jenkins, Rodney Williams, how to get to him. Kick the point, go to a second overtime. No, they go for two and the win. Jenkins rolls out, and as Mike mentioned, the holy roller rule. Ken Stabler and Dave Casper back in the late 70s, Raiders, Chargers. You can't advance a fumble on fourth down or an extra point try when it's going forward. So Washington State stays unbeaten. Seven and O. Oh. First time they've been 7-0 since 1930, the last time they went to the Rose Bowl. Michigan's attempt to stay perfect in Cedric Irvin's house. They believe in 33, sure they do. 3-0 Michigan, fake field goal. Bill Burke, backup quarterback, Cedric Irvin. Green leads by four. Second quarter, Michigan comes back. Chris Howard takes the handoff. Nice little quick cut back there, 51 yards. It set up a Brian Greasy keeper, 10-7 Michigan at the break. Second half, all Michigan in the defense. No words can describe that play by Charles Woods with the unbelievable INT. How about another pick? One of six interceptions thrown by Michigan State in the Wolverines' ground game. Grinds it out, Howard from a couple of yards out, Michigan. They haven't allowed a point in the fourth quarter in seven games this year. They win 23 to seven to stay undefeated. Purdue is 4-0 in the conference. They're six and one. First six win season since 1984. Ohio State in the third quarter scored three touchdowns. Northwestern ran nine plays in the third quarter. That was the decisive frame of the game. The Buckeyes are seven and one. Around the top 25 today, let's take it to the Southeastern Conference, where Hal Mummy's Kentucky team was within four. Tim Couch threw 41 completions in this game, an SEC record. But they couldn't get in the end zone. And Georgia has the ball. Up four. First down. Robert Edwards. Good night. 44 of his 186 yards. A career high. Georgia wins by 10. Kansas State and Oklahoma. K-State up 10-7. Eric Hickson from a couple of yards out. Makes it 17-7. DeMont Parker was injured. Oklahoma didn't have the running game going. Parker carried the ball, just carried for just a negative three yards, as a matter of fact. Darnell McDonald on the touchdown reception here. K-State wins by 19. For the Pac-10, UCLA continues its good play. The punt block returned by Duval Hicks for the touchdown. 7-0 UCLA. Third quarter, final minute. Cal's getting within 11. 11. Cade McNown to Jim McElroy. One of McElroy's three touchdowns on the day. This one was 58 yards. UCLA has won six in a row. They win this game by 18. One-sided first half. Three touchdowns in five plays for Florida State, including Thad Busby, 38-yarder to Peter Warren. Florida State leads by 23. Hit the sky that we look upon. Should tumble and fall or the mountain should crumble to the Misses the outside corner, a ball and a strike. 